This video kicks off the second part of the Streets of Paris project, which includes three videos. The first video, which is this one, covers making chocolates. The second video covers pastry, and the third covers cakes. I'll be covering the bread and other foods with the cafe segment. One of the easiest ways to make little chocolates is just to use beads. And this is especially nice if you're just not into uh, using polymer clay or making things that way. Um, you can do quite a bit with just painting beads. And I'll show you, this is one of the ones that I'm using as a, as a chocolate. And it's just the alphabet, cheap alphabet beads for bracelets and necklaces and stuff like that. And I put them on toothpicks or some of the other beads have bigger holes. So I end up putting them on little skewers and then stick them into styrofoam and then paint them all. And um, these particular ones, I'll show you here. Uh, I've painted them two different colors. You can see here's a darker and there's a lighter color brown. And what I used for this were the patina paints. Um, I used the earth and the white. So the earth is the dark color. And then if I wanted it to be lighter, I just mixed in more white. So you could get lots of variations in the color of the chocolate by using these two in different combinations or different strengths. You could also spray paint these. I mean, I have a lot of plastic spray paint and that I like to use to make things faster. And I did spray, sp spray paint some of the, the beads that I'm going to show you. And um, here you can see I've got all different kinds in these little boxes with different decorations on the top. So by painting them, and then by the time you put them in whatever display case that you're gonna use, and then if you put a little something on the top, you never know it was bead. And the stuff that's on the top is something called a cane. And you may be familiar with that. Um, it's used to decorate fingernails. So you may have seen these on people before, or you might have this yourself. And they come in all different kinds of um, candies and little designs and fruit. And so here you see I've got uh, a peppermint looking one, and that's just a swirl design on that one. There is another swirl, just a different color combination. Then there's oranges and strawberries and uh, lemons and kiwi uh, hearts. I got a couple of different kinds of hearts that I've been using and uh, that's a lime and then just another chocolate looking swirl. And these are really easy to work with even if you're not used to using clay. These are polymer clay so they will bake or you know what? With a little thing like this, I just wouldn't even bake them if you don't want to because um, they, they'll dry out over time and it's not like you're going to be playing with them and I just glued them on. And so I think it's fine if you don't uh, if you don't bake them and you're just going to use some kind of cutter. You could even use a razor, razor blade if you wanted to. You might not get as thin a cut, but you, you could just use that if you don't have one of these cutters. And just cut out some thin slices. And here you see I've got some of the fruit and the peppermint cut into thin slices. And then you also, I'll show you some other things that I'm going to use these canes for, some other different canes, where you can cut them thicker. Um, the other thing, while I'm talking about baking and beads, um, what I found in some of the beads is that, uh, depending on the clay that I used, if I tried to bake the clay with the painted bead, sometimes the color from the clay melted or, or, or um, changed the color of the chocolate wherever it touched. So any, if, if there's anything you can do where you don't bake the bead with the uh, the clay on it, that's good. Um, so I try to avoid that and, and I use different ways of, of doing that. Um, and I'll show you some others. Now here we have a different example. Here we have, again, the little alphabet beads, but they're square ones, small square ones. And again, I painted them. And then to add clay to these, instead of using the canes, I used a polymer uh, air dry clay. And you can buy sets of these and they come in lots of different colors. And it's kind of marshmallowy, uh, you know, foamy like, but it'll, it will dry really hard. It's simple to work with. So it was very easy to pinch off a little bit of this and roll it into a ball and then glue it on top of my, uh, my bead. I, I glued it on the top where there's a hole and just uh, glue it on top of my bead. And then I have this little miniature chocolate. So that's another option. And then I'll also show you um, some square beads where I just use these plain old brown cheap square beads and painted them and then jazz them up by adding ribbons of clay 
Or here, you can see I've used a combination of the canes. I've used a little bitty slice of the strawberry and then a slice of the orange and then just kind of put them together and made them stand up a little bit and make them look, you know, a little fancier. Then another thing you could do is just take a simple uh, plastic bead. This is plastic bead, just painted gold, uh, a gold coating on it. And again, I came in and I painted these. I'm going to display them in this little champagne glass. And I did two things. I painted some pink and I painted some brown. And in this case, after I painted it pink, I came in with Twinklets Diamond Dust and coated it with glue and then dipped it in this. And that's how I get all this little sparkle on it. So I th thought of it as like sugary. And then this one, I did the same thing, but then I painted it, I painted it um, brown again. And so you get this texture to it. And I did notice a lot of the chocolates that I looked at had a lot of bumpy texture on them. So that's how I did that. And then they'll look really cute in this and then you'll never see the hole uh, of the bead. The next bead option is to use this little raspberry bumpy bead. I think this is so cute. And um, I, again, I painted these two different colors. I, I believe I used spray paint on these. And then uh, I'm making this little tower of them. And in my research at looking at a lot of French pastry shops and chocolate shops and stuff like that, I noticed that in the windows and also in the shops, they had lots of tiers of different things. And so you'll see me do that. And I thought this would look cute as a, really cute as a tier here. And what I'm using to display this in is one of these. So it's kind of a lot like a larger glass dome, a cake uh, display thing. And to make this uh, look a little cuter on the bottom, give it a little bit more interest, I used the frosted spray paint and just painted the bottom with that, but I'll keep the top clear. And then you can see all of the, uh, the cute little candies or whatever these might be, uh, little chocolate things. Um, and so that's another bead option. And I'm sure there's lots more, you know, interesting shapes, beads, small beads, it's anything that's the right size would work. And another way to go with this is to use flat back beads or pearls like this. And then what I did was I painted them and then I covered them with micro beads. And then that gives you like this cute little display with the different colors. You could also use glitter. That's another option if you, if you like. So that's, that's something else to think about in terms of what you could use for, um, for making little chocolates or little desserts. And, and you could color those brown as well and not go with the pink and they would look like little, little chocolates. Another option for chocolates and the canes is to use them as the chocolate themselves by just simply cutting them thicker. This is a thicker cane and you can see I've made slices of it and then uh, I've added little, little uh, balls of, of uh, clay. This could be polymer or the air dry on top and just made that into a little cute chocolate. And then you can see I have a little box of chocolates and I'll, I'll cover all of those. And some of them you'll already recognize like the little bead with the uh, little cane design on it. But I've also cut these smaller canes that have stripes in them and cut them thicker and then put them in my chocolate boxes as other types of chocolate. So here I'm using wooden beads and you can see what they look like here. And then I um, painted them with chocolate color. And then what I did is made them look like they were stuffed with something. And so I have used more of the air dry clay. You can see here, I've used more of this, this foamy stuff. And I've made little balls and stuck them in the side. And then to jazz them up even further, I've come in and uh, added some, some uh, more um, uh, of the clay on top of it to make it look like it's iced. And so that's one option that you can do. And of course you could stuff the other beads. You could put uh, clay on the, each side to make it look like it is stuffed and full of whatever. And then another option is something that I think looks more like a pastry. This is one of these things when I saw this bead, I thought pastry. And it's just a plastic oblong bead. And here I did a combination of things. Here's two versions of it. In both cases, I painted them a chocolate color. One is a lighter chocolate. You can see here one is the darker chocolate. And then I added things to the top here. I've got the, um, these little things are the cane, these little brown things, those are, those are from a cane. And the same thing here, uh, I added uh, the, the strawberries and then the orange from the cane and just made it look like it was this little pastry and that's just little balls of clay looking something like a raspberry and I'll show you how to make fruits and stuff um, outside of using these canes. So that, that again is another option. Then you can also use metal bits as well. And what I've done here is I've stacked some rondelles 
and made some chocolates. And you can take something like this as a base, because if you look at a lot of the chocolates, the fancy stuff, they've got a lot of bumps and texture to them. And then I'm using another one here on top, paint all that, and I actually painted these two different colors of brown to make it a little bit more interesting. And then I came in with the air dry clay again, which is the yellow, and used that. Now, one tip I'll give you about the air dry clay is when it says air dry, it really, really means it. So as you start to use some of the clay, I would suggest that you put it in a plastic bag and just get all the air out of it and then put it back in its container and it'll last a lot longer. Otherwise, you will find as, as you use more, you introduce more into the container and it dries out and dries out and then pretty soon in a couple months, you can't use it at all. So that's another simple option for uh, making a chocolate. Next up is making little chocolates out of polymer clay. This is the kind that you bake. And uh, what I've done here is I use a pasta roller. It's actually one made by, uh, I forget the name of the company, but um, it's made for uh, using it on clay, but you could use anything. It's just, the, it's just having something that's cheap that you can roll clay on and not use it for anything else but that. And it's just so nice because you can get even layers of things, which is so hard to do when you roll things out. And so here I've rolled a piece of um, brown clay out of the largest setting so I get the fattest clay and I've doubled it over to get the, the depth of the chocolates that I want. And um, first of all, here's just something simple you can do, make yourself. Uh, it's a straw and I just have a wooden dowel here and I can use that to just make a punch and I use the wooden dowel to push it out. And then I get a nice little chocolate. And of course, if you use different size straws, you could get different size chocolate. Um, so very simple thing to do. And I like it too, because when you make one of your own, the push rod can be almost the width of the straw. So you'll see here, I can you can buy a series of these little, um, of these little cutters here with a little push rod inside of them. This is a round one, but the push rod is much smaller. So when you cut something out and you push it out, it is going to make a little mark in the back. And sometimes it can kind of distort it, so you might have to kind of flatten it out. But you know, that way you can cut as many as you want. And these things I bought mine on Etsy. I think I paid I think in $12, something like that. And they come in all kinds of different shapes. You, you know, you've got kind of a flower shape, an oval, sort of a teardrop here, uh, the square, uh, another flower kind of shape, and then a heart. And so you can get a lot of different shapes, either just to make chocolates or to make decorative things that, that you put on other things that you're making. So here's the heart shape. Let me show you some of these. And um, this is the teardrop shape. You can actually see it better here, right there. And uh, of course the round, you've already seen that. Uh, and I don't, I don't know if I've punched it out of other, I've punched that shape for chocolates. Now, um, in addition to just punching them and just baking them like they are, and when I bake, I bake at 275 for 15 minutes, pretty much everything, unless it's something very, very delicate, then I might bake it a little less and uh, the only other time I bake it longer is if it's something really thick. And what I usually do is turn off the oven at 15 minutes and just let it the oven cool with the clay in it and to make sure that I get it cooked really well. So once you have these, a couple things that you can do is you can see here I have foil. I've got some different color foils on these. You know, as you get chocolate box, boxes full of chocolate, some of them have foil on them. And what I use for foil is I use the wrappers from Hershey Kisses. And they make different kinds of chocolates. And so I just got some wrappers from those and it's really fine, fine foil. So it's easy to bend around something like that. And I'm sure there's a lot of other chocolates that are made that I might have some nice foils that you could use. And so I did that with some of them. And then I also uh, dress some of them up like this one here. I have these little gold flecks on it. And it's just something that I had in my stash, these little gold flecks. And I use this on cakes too. Because I noticed in the research I did that that um, a lot of chocolates and different things they had flecks of gold on them as decoration. And then here I just used two little balls of red. And then here I have a little uh, almond, and I will show you later how to make some nuts. And then uh, on this one, all I did was I just took my cutter and I just cut some lines. 
diagonal lines. So I cut a few one way and then I turned it and cut it the other way. And that just kind of led a few little zigzag patterns on the top to make it a little bit more interesting. And then I also, uh, on this one, I'll turn this sideways because I think you could see it better. So tiny here. I just stuck a piece of, another piece of um, clay right in the top of it. Just a little square piece. And I noticed that too, that a lot of the chocolates looked very modern and they had a lot of symmetrical things or, or uh, shapes that were embedded in the chocolates and some fancy things like that. So I just put a little chocolate in there. And then, um, and here I've got all kinds of like little icing swirls. Here's one that just goes across. You saw me do that with the beads. And this one is in a swirl on the top. And then this one, the swirl, I put it standing up. So hopefully you can see that. In talking about the decorations on the top of the chocolate, it brings me to the next thing, which is a tool called a clay extruder. And um, this tool, one of my very favorites, and it's very inexpensive. I believe I paid $9 for it on Amazon. It comes with uh, the tool itself and then all these different discs with different shapes on them. And there's 20 of them in, in all. And um, it's basically a plunger in a tube. And then on the end is screws off and that's where you put the clay in and whatever disc that you want. And so with this, I can twist it and you twist it away from yourself to make it work. It comes out with this ribbon or, or a column or whatever, a cane of clay, which then you can take apart. And in this case, I'll take it and I'll cut it and I will turn it into a chocolate. And so there you can see it's a little five-sided chocolate. So you can cut this as thick as you want or thin as you want. And you'll see me do a lot of stuff with this, but basically for this, for making uh, candies, I'm gonna cut it a little thicker about the same thickness as I did the other the others. Um, and there's a square and there's a circle. There's several different size circles and sets of circles. And then just other little, little um, just other little things that you could use to cut different shapes. And you'll see me use this several times. The last option I'll talk about is to use uh, pre-made molds. And I have two different ones here. This one is of, of various size little bunk cakes. So the very smallest ones on this, um, this uh, mold will produce something that looks like that, which is about the size of the other chocolates that I've been doing. Or if you wanted a little bit bigger, you could use the next side because there's there are um, seven different sizes. And then the other ones, uh, I use them as other things in, in, in further in the video and you'll see that. But the really little ones are really good for things like this or you know decorations on something larger. So you could take something like that and then maybe put a little cherry in the center of it and then that would be your chocolate. And then um, these little things would look nice with say, they're really, they look like a cookie to me and there's five of those. And then there's a long piece here. Um, and so again, the smallest of these, I actually use this one, comes out to be this shape here. And then I put one of the hearts on it from one of the canes. And now that looks like a little chocolate. So that's another option too. Lastly, I wanna talk about ways of displaying uh, the chocolates and other goodies. And one way is uh, like what I've done, which is uh, put them on these little plastic trays uh, very cute and they're paintable. So if you want to change the color and then other, another option is to put them on like a little round dish like you see the cane that I cut up and underneath it I put uh, a little paper doily and on my blog post I have a free sheet for you that's filled with doilies uh, and these doilies fit uh, the things like the, the plate and the, and the tray that are being carried by alpha stamps. And so you, when you go over there to that post, you can download that and use it um, for this project or any other project that you have where you want a little miniature doilies. And then um, you might want to create little boxes of chocolate, either you know faux boxes where they're closed or boxes that are open so you can see um, the chocolates inside or maybe a tin. And so again, I have a new claw sheet that is packed with all kinds of labels and uh, the labels uh, fit the different boxes. And you can see that uh, one of the labels fits a little tin and that tin is being carried by alpha stamps. Now to make the little box that's open, I started with a narrow matchbox. 
and I took the sleeve and cut away about a third of it and I kept the uh, drawer the same length. I didn't touch that. Then I put a little tissue paper in that and then I used some uh, really pretty foil to wrap the box in and so the foil goes past um, where the end of the uh, the sleeve is and then I just uh, add the tissue paper and then slide that back in there with a few of the chocolates and so it just looks like you know you're pulling out the the um, the, the uh, uh, drawer of chocolates um, to look at them and I'll use them in the um, in the uh, chocolatier shop and in the windows and things like that so that you can actually see the chocolates and then that piece that's left over um, the uh, third that I cut off, I just stuffed it with some chipboard so it would keep its shape and then uh, covered that with foil too. And so all those, the pretty foils that you see there, those are all being carried by Alpha Stamp. So you've got a lot of choices in colors. And of course, a lot of the, there's a lot of different colors and all the little miniature labels. And then the other boxes that are closed, I basically took a match box, the kind you buy in the grocery store, just a standard size and cut those in half and then uh, stuff them full of extra chipboard and then wrap those up in the same foil or then I also wrap some of them up in, in pretty tissue paper and put bows on them. And then another thing I did was um, I took uh, some of the labels. I've got some labels that are small enough that they uh, would work for chocolate bars. And so I also wrap those in foil, pieces of chipboard, and then put those little labels on. And so I will be having a basket of, of um, in the store, I'll have a basket of, of chocolate bars. And then the very last thing that you see with all the little chocolates in it, that's just a, a little uh, container that I had in my stash. And so, you know, you might have some little small containers that would work for little boxes of chocolate. I'll be covering a range of techniques in each of the videos. And some of the techniques I'll use more than once. So I will only go into them in detail the first time. And then uh, the next time I use that as part of something else, I won't go into detail. So I will assume that you have seen the video before uh, watching the one that you're watching now. I hope I've given you some ideas on making chocolates. As usual, I have a blog post to go along with these series of videos. And on that post, you will see a supply list. You can get access to more pictures and other info about this series and uh, the giveaways that are going on at Alpha Stamps. As usual, Alpha Stamps is carrying most of the uh, products that I used. And the link to my blog, if you're not watching this on my blog, will be down below in the description area.